What's up, it's Brandon. Welcome to my shitty basement. Today we're going to be talking about taking an axe, putting it on a haft. Hafts break all the time in our sport, uh, so we need to be ready to put new hafts on all the time. So, I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, this is a new axe head, also a new haft. Let's go over what we got to, to start with. First of all, axe head, maul handle, Lowe's, 10 bucks, easy. Um, these are usually ash or some sort of hardwood. Um, when you look at these, they can vary a lot in their sort of quality that you can get, especially from Lowe's and stuff like that. Um, there are good ones in the mix. There are some real crappy ones too. What you want to look for is um, coloration, first of all. Uh, as long as it's an even color, there's no real weird discolorations in it. Um, two different colors you can see right here it's kind of a different shade right there not too bad if it's like half and half uh, it's gonna be a weak point it's gonna break real easy so the other thing you can look at the end grain if you look at the grain at the end of the shaft um, you want the grain lines to go uh, the long width on this shaft so the width of the shaft the long way is this way if the grain lines go this way it's gonna be strong uh, if they go the other way, it's going to tend to break easier um, because when we're striking, obviously the oblong part of the handle is here. That's what's going to take most of the force as you hit. So if the grains go long ways on here, for the most part long ways, you're good to go. This one's kind of diagonal, but we're going to make it work. That's what they had. These are going to break regardless. Uh, eventually, it may last a year, it may last two years, it may last one fight. Depends on how rough you are with it and how good the wood is, all that kind of stuff. I've used a block a lot, it's going to break. One thing we can do to increase the longevity is add what we call langettes or steel to the side. Um, so what we have here for our langettes is eighth inch thick, half inch wide, um, three foot long piece of welding steel. This so you can just get a Lowe's, um, any hardware store really. It doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be hardened or anything like that. It's just going to add some strength to it. So when we put the when we put the lingots onto the haft and then the haft onto the head, um, we got to put pins through it to hold everything together. Pins have to go through one side, through the haft, through the other side, peened on both sides, which means the metal just flattened out. We'll show you how to do that. What I like to use is super cheap, super easy, 20 penny nails, um, 20 penny common nails. So there's sinkers out there, if you don't know much about nails. Commons and sinkers. Commons, 20D commons are a thicker shaft uh, made out of thicker wire. I've used 16 penny nails and 20 penny sinkers, which are thinner. Um, I tend to shear those off pretty quickly. So this is going to be pretty stout, you know, piece of steel going through there. So that's what we're going to go with. So to drill the holes for those, I find the best is 732nd drill bit. Um, if you get like a cobalt drill bit, we find that those ones last the longest. Um, so, especially going through steel and hardened steel, axe heads are hardened steel, so it's tough on drill bits. So, 732nd um, gives you a little bit of play with the 20 penny nails, but not too much. Um, it's enough so you can drive your nail through there without any trouble, and then you can peen it out or mushroom the end out. Uh, where it's going to stay solid. So that's what we're going to do. The other thing that's going to help you out, the other thing that's going to help you out, some 3 in 1 oil um, for doing when you're drilling. If your drill bit gets hot, heat is going to destroy this drill bit, make it dull. So as we're drilling, we're going to go slow. Uh, we're going to add lubrication to the metal um, to make sure that we don't kill our drill bit. It'll end up cutting through better. It'll be better all around. Let's get to it. So as far as tools go, um, it's really, really helpful to have. You can pick them up for pretty inexpensive, just an angle grinder. Um, yeah, you can get these, a cheap one for like probably 30 bucks. Um, it's going to do what we need to do. We're not going to be putting any kind of real hard stress on this tool, so it's going to be pretty easy. And then the thing you're going to need is a drill. Um, drill the hole, a drill press on a bench is going to be by far the easiest. Um, I just got this big old 
nasty drill that I've had forever. Um, this is going to work just fine. Drill holes through the haft, through the steel, through the head if we need to make the hole bigger. Um, this will work just fine. So what I'm going to do first is, so this haft is going to hit fit on this, well, this head's going to fit on this haft here. Um, it's a little bit loose, so we want to go down a little bit farther. We also need to make room for the langettes. So the langettes need to go between the haft and the head, and everything needs to be pinned. Everything needs to be pinned through this one hole. So when you put your pin through there, it's going to go through your head, your langette. Your haft, the other line got out the other side of the head. It's gonna keep everything together. It's gonna keep your head from flying off, killing spectators, um, hurting your friends. Um, we want to hurt our friends on purpose. We don't want it to be an accident. So, so take my flat disc, sand this notch, sand this lump here flat. So my line gets will sit flat. The head will go right over that, and everything will fit on there. Um, so that's what we do. <laughs> Around the end of these wing guts, where they're going to be exposed on the side of the haft, so that they don't get caught on people, cut people, stuff like that. It's just a safety thing. Uh, I got three holes. Uh, this one's going to be up inside the head of the axe. Um, this is going to be down at the bottom. I need one in the middle. Hold everything together. Well, I need these to be exactly in the same place as these holes on this one. So I'm going to stack these up together. Make sure they sit flat together. Now the ones that are up inside the head, it doesn't matter if they're exactly even. It's the ones on the outside. As you look at it, you want it to be even um, from side to side. So we're stacking them up right together, and we use the holes that I just drilled to drill the other holes. I knocked shit all over the place. Once I get my first holes, let's just drop, just drop something in there, keep everything in line. I don't have to try to hold everything together so hard then. Alright, by some fucking miracle, everything lined up. Uh, had to mess with it, persuade it a little bit. We drove our nail through our axe, line get, haft, line get, out the other side. See, there's only a very little bit of play around that hole right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off with our grinder. Um, you really only need like a about an eighth of an inch of that nail left because what we're going to do is we're going to peen it so we're going to smash it down with a hammer on an anvil make it mushroom out so nothing can come off so let's cut it that's all you need even that that's about as much as you need. You don't need any more than that, or else it'll get hard to paint it over. Let's go peed. Alright. Here are my very clean and tidy work area. Some brick thing that was here. This is just an anvil. It's not really an anvil. It's an anvil shaped object. It's just cast iron. Um, pick it up at Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks or something. Ball peen hammer. As the name suggests, for peening. Um, we use the round end. We're just going to hit. Make sure the head of our nail, the back end, on the anvil, nice and firm. We're going to strike this with a decent amount of force to bend the metal. We're going to go around in a circle and sort of mushroom this out. I'm not going to go super tight right now, just enough where it doesn't come out. So I can drill the other holes.
That's it. So that's what we're looking at. Just enough to hold it on there. Just make that end a little bit bigger to see the other side. It's got a regular old nail head. So now, these are still kind of loose, they can move around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line them up, gonna drill a hole straight through, peen that, peen that, and then come back and tighten all these up Hammer them down as hard as it'll go. Everything should be rock and roll, ready to rock and roll. Important, I drill this hole first. Drop that in, just to keep everything in line so that, we'll get everything lined up here. So that this hole is in line, so that when we get ready to paint everything, it's all straight. I got that one really short. Uh, we'll see, I might be able to get it. enough there there's enough play I was able to get a get that paint over so it'll stay it's not super tight yet I'll get the other one in there cut it get that one started and then tighten everything down all right so that's in there everything's lined up good so we're gonna paint all these really tight now I like to just smash it down pretty hard. It's gonna bend the nail a little bit inside there, make everything tight. Paint it. These just look like plain old nail heads. So we're gonna paint those too to make them look like a peened head instead of just some stupid nail. Because we wanna be, you know, make it look kinda historical. The last thing that we want to do, this is all in here, this is nice and tight, not going anywhere. So we're going to cut this end off, we're going to cut this end off, we're going to drive some wedges, wood wedges, all around in here, hammer this all flat, tight, um, you're going to put a little wood glue afterwards, after you get all those wedges in there, um, it'll kind of seal everything up, keep them from flying out, they shouldn't anyway, but other than that, Take some windseed oil, rub it all over the spare wood. Nice couple coats on there, even on the steel, it'll protect the steel once it's nice and clean. And you're ready to go chop.